Hi everyone, so today we're going to be looking at the first part of the IGCSE assets and basis topic. So first of all, what is an acid? An acid is a chemical substance whose aqueous solutions have a pH below 7. So an example of an acid would be HNO3 or HCl. So let's look more into what are acids. So acids are proton donors. They break into hydrogen ions and another compound when placed in an aqueous solution. So a hydrogen atom will lose electrons to form a hydrogen ion, and this is what forms an acid. So acids dissociate in water to give off H plus ions. As you can see, they can fully dissociate, which gives a strong acid, such as HCl, hydrochloric acid, or H2SO4, sulfuric acid. Or they can also partially dissociate, which gives you a weak acid, such as H2CO3. Another thing to take note of is as the number of H plus increases, the pH goes down, which means the acid gets stronger. So what are some physical properties of an acid? So an acid always has a pH below 7. It may taste sour, it is soluble in water, and it is able to conduct electricity. So now let's look at bases. So what is a base? A base is a chemical substance whose aqueous solution have a pH above 7. And we also can look at alkalis. Alkalis, as you can see, are a type of soluble base. So not all bases are alkalis, but all alkalis are bases. Some examples of alkalis may fall in group 1, or magnesium, or ammonia. So bases are proton receivers. They can be soluble as an alkali or insoluble and they dissociate in water to give hydroxide ions. So they can fully dissociate to get a strong base such as sodium hydroxide, NaOH, or lithium hydroxide, LiOH. Or they can partially associate to get something like ammonium hydroxide, NH4OH. So some physical properties of bases would be the pH is always greater than 7. They are soluble in water as an alkali, as I mentioned. They are able to conduct electricity, and they may taste bitter or soapy. So now, look at, now let's look at some acid-base reactions. First reaction, which happens both as an acid and a base, is the neutralization reaction. So this is when an acid plus a base, so the base could be like a metal hydroxide or a metal oxide, forms a salt plus water. So what is a salt? A salt is formed when a base neutralizes an acid. Some examples of observations would be that the temperature increases and it's an exothermic reaction. So let's look at an example of this reaction. So we could have hydrochloric acid, HCl, plus sodium hydroxide would form our salt. In this case, it is sodium chloride plus water. Now the second reaction we're going to look at is acid plus metal. So an acid plus metal would give salt and hydrogen gas. Some observations here would be that the solid dissolves, disappears, the temperature increases, and that there may be bubbling and fizzing. Example here would be H2SO4 plus zinc metal gives you zinc SO4, so zinc sulfate, plus hydrogen gas. And thirdly, for the acid reactions, we're going to look at an acid plus metal carbonate. So acid plus metal carbonate gives you salt plus carbon dioxide plus water. The observations here would be that the solid dissolves again and they're fizzing. So an example of this would be hydrochloric acid plus calcium carbonate, which is also known as limestone, gives you calcium chloride plus carbon dioxide gas plus water and then just quickly make sure this is balanced and those are the three different reactions we're going to look at for acids now on to our alkali reactions so first off we have the same neutralization reaction which we saw over here where an acid plus base gives you a salt and water and the second one for alkali reactions is going to be an alkali plus ammonium salt so the observations here would be that the solid dissolves and bubbling. And what are our products? So our products are going to be salt 
plus water plus ammonia gas. So let's write an equation for this. So we could have sodium hydroxide plus ammonium chloride, which gives us sodium chloride plus water plus ammonia gas. So those are the reactions we're going to look at for both acids and alkalis. Lastly, we're going to talk a little bit about indicators. So the first indicator, which we may see a lot, is the use of litmus paper. So when testing for an acid, if you dip, the litmus, if you dip a red litmus paper in acid, it will stay red. However, if you dip a blue litmus paper in an acid, it will change to red. On the other hand, if you dip a, ba if you dip a blue litmus paper in a base, it will stay blue. But if you dip a red litmus paper in a base, it will change to blue. Secondly, the way to just tell if it's an acid or an alkali is by the pH level. So if the pH is less than 7, as we mentioned, it is acidic. If it is equal to 7, it is neutral. And if it's greater than 7, it's alkaline. And lastly, universal indicator, which is just a scale from 0 to 14. So from 0 to 7, you have your acidic. From At 7, you have neutral. And from 8 to 14, you have alkaline. So if the range falls maybe somewhere between 0 and, let's say, 3, it is most likely a strong acid. From anywhere like 3 to 7, you will have a weak acid. And then you have neutral. Anywhere from around 8 to 11 would be a weak base or alkaline. And then from around 11 to 14, you have a strong base. So that's all we're going to look at in today's video. I hope this is much clearer for you now. Thank you.